Welcome to Group Delay Visualized, a first attempt at creating a video which may somewhat help unveil the ambiguity surrounding group delay. So much can be said about the topic, but with limited time only, this first pass will have to suffice for now, and mostly focuses on the outcome, whereas future revisions of this video may offer more and better clarification. So please regard version 0.0.1 as the first course of a more exhaustive menu. While I have published a rather in-depth article about group delay in 2019, whose URL you will find in the description, there is only so much one can achieve with static imagery. This initial video will begin by scratching the surface once more, but at least there is some action to see. It features a lot of detail which may be lost on smartphones and tablets. Use a computer for the best viewing experience. The setup we will be using is relatively straightforward. We will use two analyzers at once to measure the left and right channel of a plugin host using two plugins. The left channel is measured with transfer function analysis and a pink noise signal, whereas the right channel is measured with an oscilloscope and a sine wave followed by a tone burst. The first plugin is a simple delay plugin where the value is set in samples whereas the second plugin features a second order all pass filter. The simple delay plugin time delays all frequencies by the same amount. For a 1 kHz sine wave whose time period lasts 1 millisecond, a quarter millisecond of delay equals a quarter of a cycle or 90 degrees. Half a millisecond equals half a cycle or 180 degrees. Three quarters of a millisecond delay equals three quarters of a cycle or 270 degrees, whereas one millisecond equals one whole cycle or 360 degrees. The all pass filter, which allows all frequencies to pass, introduces frequency dependent phase delay and can affect a one kilohertz sine wave in a similar fashion like before by strategically choosing its corner frequency. In addition to a user-definable corner frequency, typical second-order all-pass filters also allow users to set the filter's bandwidth in octaves, or alternatively, its quality factor Q. Notice that by doing so, the phase response's slope changes from shallow to steep and back. However, for the 1 kHz sine wave, filter bandwidth does not affect the 180-degree offset at the corner frequency characteristic for second-order all-pass filters. If we instruct the analyzer on the left to show group delay, the first derivative of the phase response, the result is returned in milliseconds rather than degrees phase, like before. Notice that by changing the filter bandwidth, frequency-dependent amounts of group delay can be achieved. Notice also that it does not affect the 1 kHz sine wave a single pure tone which does not constitute a group of frequencies. However, if we truncate our sine wave by virtue of gating, it stops being a pure tone with only one sinusoidal component. Instead, we get a carrier wave with an amplitude envelope, a waveform also known as a tone burst or wavelet, which consists of multiple sinusoidal components. In other words, a group of frequencies. The bandwidth of such a burst between the half power points is inversely proportional to its duration, where short bursts constitute wide frequency groups, whereas long bursts constitute narrow groups. For more information, please consider reading my article, A Group of Frequencies, whose URL you will find in the description and was featured in LifeSound International magazine. If we change the filter bandwidth once more, the narrow group of frequencies sinusoidal components, including 1 kHz, are subjected to various amounts of phase delay.
as one can tell from the phase response in the plugin settings. The sinusoidal components are dispersed and the waveform is distorted. As a result, its amplitude envelope, rather than the carrier wave, is delayed. Notice that, like the sine wave before, the zero crossings on the oscilloscope do not shift with changing filter bandwidth. So group delay means a delay through a system measured on the amplitude envelope of the signal. And the analyzer to the left, still set to show group delay, shows by how much for the narrow banded 1 kHz tone burst, roughly 2.5 milliseconds, or a little over one radical, on the oscilloscope. Let's complete this video by looking at a special filter which shifts all frequencies by 90 degrees or a quarter cycle without introducing any group delay. Notice that for a pure tone 1 kHz sine wave, the output waveform shown on the oscilloscope has shifted accordingly. Since group delay is the first derivative of the phase response, no slope means no group delay. And this filter's phase response, albeit 90 degrees off, is flat as a ruler. As a result, for our narrow banded tone burst, a group of frequencies, the carrier wave, shown on the oscilloscope, has shifted accordingly as well. But the waveform's amplitude envelope remains stationary. This filter shifts all frequencies by 90 degrees, and as such there is no dispersion among the sinusoidal components in our group of frequencies, and the amplitude envelope is not delayed. That's it. That's all I was able to put together for now. And so much more can be said. Until then, simply because group delay is measured in seconds, like actual propagation delay, do not mistake it for representing signal arrival time. There's more to it, and frankly, I don't know if I even understand it myself. Thank you for watching.